So, good day, people. How are you going? This is Glenn, and today I have some new banknotes that I will be uh, opening up. So, this is an unboxing or unlettering. And have a look at these beautiful stamps. So, this is similar to another lot that I got. Oh, yeah, the guy actually used the same stamp there. So this guy from the United States is actually using a lot of old stamps because quite honestly he can't sell them. Have a look at that son, Louisiana, 1812 to 1962, so 1962 stamp worth 4 cents and Henry James, 3 ounce, so I'm not too sure how much that is, that's 2016, 1958. And International Geophysical Year. So geophysics is a using physics on geological structures. 1957, 58. And geology is very interesting. It's one of the topics that I like. And also, I actually should show you my fossil collection. And I do have some other geological uh, rocks. So let's have a look. Let's just open it up. So, I can't show you any of the addresses, so I'll open this one from the United States up first. Actually, it might not be banknotes, it might be coins. Coins is something awesome to get. And also in videos later on, I have a lot of uh, Brazilian coins. I realise I haven't done any coins videos about Brazil. So, I will do those later. And, yeah, the one from the United States is, uh, coins, so we have a Canadian one cent, 1932, I actually don't have this type of Canadian cent, and on the back it has, oh, let's have a look, there's King George V, so, that's a nice coin to get. Uh, what's the other two coins? And the other coins I got is the United States 5 cents. So here we have a V for 5. And on the other side, 1883. So I don't know the mintage. And it has a Liberty head. So this is quite a common coin. What I want to do is collect uh, coins from 1 cent up into one dollar from the 1850s to 18 uh, 1900s and then I want to make a video on it so that's one of my goals uh, I already have the one dollar so I don't have to worry about that uh, I have uh, I need to get Indian head one cent I do have one but it's 1906 which is out of the date range and this is actually the second coin so I need to get the, the rest but that would take a while okay I've got another Canadian cent. This is 1920, so this is the first year of the small cent. So before this date, they actually had a larger cent. So this one would have circulated in the United States as well. And let me see if we can get some better light. So there you go, that's that's a good coin. It's actually in not as good condition as the 1932. But I'll have to look them up on Numistar and see which one is actually the one to actually hold on to and which one I have to get rid of. Uh, two other coins I have. So I have a two and sixpence, so two shillings, sixpence, or half a crown, 1888. He has the coat of arms of the United Kingdom. So he has the harp of Ireland, the three lions of England, and the lion of uh, Scotland. As you can see, there is no Welsh coat of arms in there. That's because that was cast as part of England at the time, or governed mainly by England. They were actually not very independent. And on the back we have Queen Victoria. So I did have a double florin, which is four shillings, but I actually sold that one. I should have kept it. Oh, well, poor me. I actually quite like this design. Another one I got is a crown. So this is a large coin. Uh, I think this one is about a 
one and a half million. So here's a 50 cent coin, which is equivalent to five shillings. But as you can see, it's not the same size. And in the 1900s, these actually didn't circulate that well because, have a look how big it is. So it has a dragon down there. It has uh, St. George on his horse slaying the dragon. I probably should have made that Pegasus put wings on it. It would have been more awesome. And, oh, Queen Victoria as well. Actually, I did want to get one of these, and this one's in pretty good condition. Yeah, it has reading. So that's a nice collection. Nice thing to add to my collection. Okay. The other ones I got are banknotes. So here I have a Ceylon or Sri Lanka. Uh, 1942. Now they issued these banknotes because uh, of wartime. So there was a, a lack of coinage or a restriction on coinage because they need to divert a lot of the metals for war machinery. So on the back this has the serial number and that's about it. Okay, Indonesia 1960 has, has Sukarno, not Suharto, Sukarno. And he was the president of the time, has, has a guada with the coat of arms on it. Oh, that is actually the coat of arms in Indonesia. And here on the back, those colours are quite nice. Awesome. Red and blue. I actually quite like that. To me, it looks really attractive. And two people, most likely in traditional dress of one of the ethnic groups. And I quite like that. This is bigger than what I thought. Okay, Egypt, 25 paces. So they actually issue a coin, and as far as I know, they actually issue, do issue these banknotes. There's a coat of arms of the Arab Republic of Egypt. And it has some agricultural products that they actually produce. So wheat, which has been produced in the Middle East for probably the past 5,000 years. Corn, which generally come from Central America. Uh, looks like cauliflower. Might be which uh, originated in Europe as far as I know. And on the back it has one of the mosques. This is 2002. So one of the mosques of Egypt. And the current value is about 20 pounds to one US dollar. So this is worth one cent. They've been really suffering from inflation and the current government is really not doing much to help it. Oh! Another banknote of that 1960 series, I've got 125, so I need to get the rest. Pretty much the same on this side. And on the back, it has another female. And that is quite a nice banknote. Okay, the next banknote goes Sudan. So as you can see, it's the whole of Sudan with um, uh, South Sudan. And here we have Arabic, and I think that's Nubian. So, Nubian, most likely. Nubian is the language spoken in the north of the country. And this is 1991 or 1311. And on the back, looks like we have, it's either the Parliament House or Central Bank building. But I'm not too sure. They should actually write down what's actually on it. And has a coat of arms in this um as a watermark. Let's, can you see the watermark? Coat of arms. So that's a ten pound, one of my first Sudanese banknotes. And here is another banknote. Which country is this? Syria? Ah oh, yes, yeah, Syria. Ten pounds from nineteen ninety one, Syria. This was replaced by a coin in nineteen ninety six, I believe. That's just from memory. And this looks like a oil refinery or gas refinery. And here we have a lamp, most likely an oil lamp. It's a watermark, a horse, horse's head. And here we have a building. Let's actually have what building it is and the female dancing. So not bad. It's not that good, but it's not that bad. Oh. Another Sudanese 25 piastres, so uh, 
Egypt is to issue 25 piastres and so did Sudan. This one has the same building as the other one. It's probably the same issue actually. Yeah, I'd say it's the same issue. And on this side we just have the uh, map of Sudan to Kamur. And this one is, is it 1978? Or 1987, I get confused between 7 and 8 in Arabic. Oh, how silly of me. So, that one's probably a later banknote in this series. Oh, a banknote I've already got. Libby, Li, not Libyan, Lebanon, 5 lira, or 5 pounds in English. And down below, you can see it has, and on the sides, it actually has Phoenician all around the banknote. So Phoenician is a Semitic language that was spoken probably up until 400 AD. And it was a language on the more of the coastal areas of uh, Lebanon. And it's a native language. It's a language that also the uh, Carthagians actually used to speak as well. And this one's 1976, I believe. And on the back it has a bridge, Cinque Livres, that's the same in Arabic as well. Awesome. What's the watermark? Looks like a boat. Okay, another banknote. Ooh, is this Lebanon again? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. <gasps> yes it is! It's the Ten Livres. Ten Livres. And here we have a geological structure. Not too sure what that is. And on this we have a... That might be Tyre. Mm, have to look that up. Same date, 1976. And... Serial numbers seem to follow the... Uh, uh, French ones as well. So, the last five numbers here. Are the last five numbers there. Then you have new numbers there. And these are letters... So, that's a 10, and here we have 250 Liras. So this was quite a nice score. I'm trying to get this set. And the watermark is someone's head around a circle. And here's another geological structure. Not too sure what that is. Obviously down there is the date, 1977. And... On the back, more geological structures. I need to look this up on uh, Numbstar no, Banknotes.ws. So 250 Libras. Another one, oh, I've already got this one. This is my favourite series of Uruguay. 500 pesos or 500 or 50 new centimos. And it has uh, Simon, is that Simon Bolivar. Looks evil with his eyes, and here on the back we have a hydroelectric dam which produces electricity. It's probably one of them. Oh, another one I got. Uh, this has Tubac Amaru II. It was on the coin it actually showed before. Uh, is it the, the Ten Souls? And this is called the Intis, which is a currency in between the previous souls and between. Between 1985 and 1990, I believe. And this like, suffered from hyperinflation. And on the back, we just have the mountains. And this is printed by Bundesrecki, which is a banknote printer in Germany. And someone's going hiking. And this is part of the Nazca lines. Looks like a dolphin or something like that. Nazca lines. So the Nazca lines are actually. A a bunch of drawings, or not drawings, they're like carved, they're like carved into the mountainside, and when you're actually there, looking at them ground level, you can't really tell that much, but when you go up into an aircraft, you actually can see them quite clearly, so maybe it's a representation for the gods to see them. Okay, another one I got. Argentina, 50 Australs. Have we got this one? I'm not too sure. 
um, his um, Bartolome Mitres, I think the guy who uh, introduced the meter, which is the best system to use. Screw you feet, yards, inches, what a load of crap that was. And here we have a, looks like Argentina sitting down. Okay, another one I have is a Cruzados from Brazil. And this one has a Ducio Lovato. Looks like he might be a microbiologist or something like that with the microscope. Not too sure who that guy is. And on the back, Institute Oswaldo Cruz. Nice, beautiful old building. If we look up the architecture on that building. Okay, and then I have some other bank notes I got. Oh, look, South African. African bank notes. I like to speak it because all I like to speak the vendor. The good thing about South Africa is that all the native languages are actually uh, official languages, like like they are in India. No, oh, in India most of the languages are official. So we've got Zulu, Venda, um, Tswana, you got English and uh, Afrikaans and a few other ones. So here I have bank notes from the 80s. These ones are undated, but you have to go by signatures. And these ones would have been issued over a time period, like three or four years because of the signatures. And I can't remember who that guy is. I'll make another video and look him up. Here we have a Merino ram, which is very common in Australia, in a type of uh, cattle. Salente Jand. And on the back, we have, looks like Dutch sailing ships, because of the flag. And the coat of arms of South Africa at the time. And then we have the two land, which... Is no longer in circulation. None of these are in circulation, but I believe they're legal tender and looks like it is a oil refinery. And also some German banknotes. So I have a Unf Millionen, so 5 million marks, 1923. As you can see, it has colour on this side, it's just plain on this side, but if you run your hand along it, these lines actually protrude and you can actually feel them. I actually quite like that. And these ones are uni face, so there you go. And these lines here are actually a security feature. It also has watermark of 5,000. So it's probably taken from another one. And I also have 20 million, which is of the same issue. So there's also a... Uh, t I think 1, 10 and 50 million of this issue. And the watermark, what's the watermark? It looks like a complex watermark. This is also uniface, but it doesn't have the lines on it. So that's all I have to show you. Anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and also check out my links below. I might sell some of these on eBay again. Or I'll keep them in my collection. If not, I'll put an affiliate link to some of these issues on eBay. And have an awesome back note collecting time, people. Bye-bye.